Welcome to the Key Chapters of the Bible podcast. This is a daily podcast that's going through the key chapters of God's Word. Sometimes the Lord calls us to accomplish some task that is simply beyond our present strength and ability. When we face those situations, we might be tempted to ask, how am I going to do this? Well, we can find wisdom in the Lord's exhortation of Joshua nearly 3,500 years ago. Be strong and courageous. And as we work through today's study in Joshua chapter 1, we'll see that God is not calling us to be strong and courageous in our limited human abilities, but rather be strong and courageous in our faith and obedience to Him. And that's going to be the theme of today's study in Joshua chapter 1. So, welcome to the Key Chapters of the Bible podcast. My name is Russ Brewer, and we are going through the key chapters of God's Word, one chapter per day, explaining what it means and how it fits into the overall message of God. Today, we are turning to a new book of the Bible, the book of Joshua. And so, this is an exciting development in our study of God's Word, because we've been looking forward to this day for 700 years, or or maybe just a couple months. But in terms of biblical chronology, the year is 1405 BC, and the children of Israel have been waiting for over 700 years from when God first promised to Abraham back in Genesis 12 and 2140 BC that his descendants would inherit the promised land. And so now we're on the cusp of that prophecy finally coming to fulfillment, and the book of Joshua records how God's promises unfolded throughout his miraculous work among his people. And so let's go to Joshua chapter 1, and let's start working through this book together. Joshua 1 opens somewhere around March or April 1405 BC, and now the Lord is calling Joshua to step on up and lead the people into the promised land. Now, hopefully you remember Joshua. Joshua's name means the Lord is salvation, and that's a great name for this new leader of God's people. Joshua is one of the good guys from Numbers 13. Remember Numbers 13? That's that chapter, that that fateful chapter where the 12 spies go into the promised land and check it on out and get their bearings, but when they come back, 10 of those spies spread a fearful, complaining report. Only Joshua and Caleb were like, guys, the Lord is with us. He'll defeat these Canaanites. We could trust him to go into the promised land. But the people wouldn't listen. And they started a mutiny against the Lord. And so the Lord steps in and just shuts that down and tells everyone, you all are not going to the promised land. Just Joshua and Caleb. And so here we are now, here in Joshua chapter 1. It's 40 years later, Moses died at the end of Deuteronomy, and and now the Lord is calling Joshua to step on up and lead this next generation to the promised land. Now we need to keep in mind that although Joshua was younger than Moses, he's not a young dude at this point. Joshua was born as a slave in Egypt. He was delivered from Egypt along with the rest of that first generation. And so he, with his own eyes, saw the parting of the Red Sea. He saw the Lord provide quail from the sea, water from a rock, manna from nowhere. I'm sure he saw fire destroy Nadab and Abihu, or or Miriam get leprosy, or, or just the ground swallow up Korah and his followers. And so Joshua's had a front row seat to these lessons from God, and unlike the other people of that Exodus generation, Joshua has grown in his trust and belief in the Lord. And so consequently, the Lord is saying, Joshua and Caleb are the only two guys going to the promised land. Or, to put it another way, the nation that they're starting has a charter of obedience to God. They were going to be different from the nations of the world. They were going to follow the ways of God, not the ways of man. And at the end of the day, only Joshua and Caleb had this kind of faith that the Lord would choose to build his nation upon. Everyone else had a man-word focus, we're just going to do whatever we want kind of faith that the Lord has declared time and again is basically just pride and rebellion and disbelief. Obviously, the Lord doesn't want to build a nation on that. And so only Joshua and Caleb were going into the promised land. And so at this point, Joshua is a seasoned servant of the Lord. Joshua 24, 9 tells us that he was 110 years old when he died, and he's thought to have died around 1390 BC. And if the conquest began in 1405 BC, that means that Joshua is something like 95 years old here. And so he's not just some like you know, whippersnapper going into the promised land. He's a pretty senior dude here. And so you've got this nonagenarian, that's a person who's in their 90s, you've got this nonagenarian who is leading a couple million people on one of the greatest and most unlikely military conquests in the pages of history. And so this is not a small, easy, simple task that the Lord has given this 95-year-old man. And so like everything that Joshua has learned so far, he's going to have to trust the Lord. And the book of Joshua unfolds with how Joshua and the people trusted the Lord as he went before them and brought them into the promised land. So not surprisingly, this book is called the book of Joshua. It's named after Joshua. Joshua. 
As for the theme of this book, the theme that I memorized back in seminary was conquer and divide. Now, that's not divide and conquer, but conquer and divide because the people needed to conquer the land before they could divide it according to the 12 tribes of Israel. As for the outline, the outline is pretty straightforward. Chapters 1 and 12 can be titled Conquer. Chapters 13 and 24 can be titled Divide. Now, we're only going to be focusing on the conquer part because the divide part can be fairly tedious going through all those details. But as always, you should read it. But for the purposes of this podcast, we'll just be focusing on a few chapters at the beginning of this book, specifically Joshua 1, 2, 3, 6, and perhaps 7. And so let's work through this chapter, chapter 1 here, and see why this is a key chapter in our overall study of the Word of God. The opening verses of chapter 1 set the scene. They start us out by saying, Now it came to pass, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Now, again, this is 700 years after God's first promise to Abraham back in Genesis 12. And all along, the Lord has been working out his plan according to his time frame. And now those promises are starting to be fulfilled in and through Joshua. And so the Lord tells him in verse 3, Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you just as I spoke to Moses. And so the plan is that Joshua is to lead the people into the promised land. Just a massive task. Again, these are new responsibilities for Joshua. As for the theme of this book, the theme that I memorized back in seminary was conquer and divide. Now, that's not divide and conquer, but conquer and divide because the people needed to conquer the land before they could divide it according to the 12 tribes of Israel. As for the outline, the outline is pretty straightforward. Chapters 1 and 12 can be titled Conquer. Chapters 13 and 24 can be titled Divide. Now, we're only going to be focusing on the conquer part because the divide part can be fairly tedious going through all those details. But as always, you should read it. But for the purposes of this podcast, we'll just be focusing on a few chapters at the beginning of this book, specifically Joshua 1, 2, 3, 6, and perhaps 7. And so let's work through this chapter, chapter 1 here, and see why this is a key chapter in our overall study of the Word of God. The opening verses of chapter 1 set the scene. They start us out by saying... Now it came to pass, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Now, again, this is 700 years after God's first promise to Abraham back in Genesis 12. And all along, the Lord has been working out his plan according to his time frame. And now those promises are starting to be fulfilled in and through Joshua. And so the Lord tells him in verse 3, Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you just as I spoke to Moses. And so the plan is that Joshua is to lead the people into the promised land. Just a massive task. Again, these are new responsibilities for Joshua. And so the Lord gives Joshua several encouraging promises in verse 5. And so in verse 5, he tells Joshua, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I've been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Just so, just think about that for a moment. Here you have the Lord promising Joshua, I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. Imagine what a blessing it would have been to hear these promises from the Lord himself, that that he would be with us, that he will not fail us, that he will not forsake us. And so Joshua hears these promises, and then the Lord gives him the mechanism by which Joshua would walk in them in verses 6 to 9. And so in verse 6, the Lord tells him, be strong and courageous. And then in verse 7, he says, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. And so you're probably hearing a theme in this chapter here. Be strong and courageous. That phrase occurs four times in this passage, here in verse 6, then verse 7, then 9, and verse 18. Just a great theme from this chapter here. And so Joshua's hearing these exhortations from the Lord here in these verses, and the Lord tells him, only be strong and very courageous. And that's the only option. Joshua can't just be strong and courageous. He's got to be strong and very courageous. Everything that the Lord has set before Joshua for him to do requires that Joshua be strong and very courageous. Now, that may seem impossible, 
How do we make our emotions feel courage when everything else around us tells us to be afraid? Well, we find the answer in verses 8 and 9. Verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. And so here's the recipe for having strength and courage in the midst of overwhelming obstacles. Know God's word, believe God's word, obey God's word. And so here we're seeing that the foundation of Joshua's success will come from knowing God's word well and obeying it and following it, which is why then Joshua needs to meditate on it day and night. Now, in biblical terminology, the word meditate doesn't mean something like emptying his mind and just kind of humming or something like that. Here we can see that this word means to fill his mind with the word of God, to take in God's word and ruminate on it and let it permeate Joshua's heart, mind, and soul. And, and then like 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells us to take every thought captive to Christ, to bring it to surrender and submission to the Lord so that it's rooted in God's truth, undergirded by faith and trust. And, and as we can see in these verses here, then empowered by the Holy Spirit to be oriented to obedience. And when Joshua follows that recipe, then God will make his way prosperous and he will have success. If Joshua will not learn what God has said, or if he will not believe what God has said, if he will not put his trust in the Lord, or he has no intentions of actually obeying what God has said to do, then he won't have the strength and courage he'll need to accomplish what God's called him to do. There is no spiritual accomplishment without meditating upon God's word to know it and believe it and obey it. Without those ingredients... A leader is leading from his flesh and, and at best accomplishing human-powered work rather than spiritual work done by the Holy Spirit. Well, going on to verse 9, the Lord then goes on to say, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so all of this we're learning by here, this is a matter of obedience to God's commands. Who is Joshua going to put his faith in? How is Joshua going to lead these people? God's commanded him, go into the land and be very courageous. Lead the people in the conquest and be very courageous. Trust in the Lord and be very courageous. Which then we see Joshua really was faithful to these commands because the rest of the chapter shows what he does. And so going on to verse 10, Joshua then tells the leaders, get the people ready for conquest because in three days we're going in. And then in verses 12 and 13, he reminds the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh about their prior agreements to be part of this conquest. And then as we drop down to verse 16, we see then how all the people respond. They say to Joshua, whatever you command, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. And in verse 18, they even declare that anyone who rebels will be put to death. And then they encourage Joshua with the Lord's word, saying, Be strong and courageous. And so they're with Joshua. They're ready to follow the Lord and trust him and go into the promised land and take hold of what God has given to them. And so we're seeing here all that divisive grumbling of the book of Numbers. That's all gone. This is now a unified group of faithful people. They're supporting Joshua and they're ready to carry out the work that God has called them to do. And this then begins the conquest. And while it will have a couple of hiccups along the way, it's going to be nothing like what we've been reading about in the book of Numbers a few days ago. And so that's Joshua chapter 1. As we wrap up our study in this chapter, this chapter is filled with several nuggets for our soul. For one thing, we have to remember the principle that strength and courage come from meditating on the Word of God and seeking to obey it. Once we know God's Word, and once we align our lives to it, we will have a courage that cannot be defeated. Along these same lines, it's impossible to be righteously strong and courageous without a clear understanding of God and His Word. We might be strong and courageous, but if we don't really know the Lord and, and what God is saying and what He has called us to do, we might be bold and we might be strong, but not in a way that is godly and righteous. And we may end up hurting people and, and perhaps from a, a human perspective, we might even be harming the work of God in this world. And so the goal isn't to have courage just because we want to be some strong and courageous person like we might see in a movie, nor is it just to have faith for faith's sake, as if that's all God wants. He wants us to know his word and to trust his word and follow his ways and go and live in light of it. In verse 8, we saw that success is contingent upon our obedience to the Lord. 
And so as we meditate on God's word, we are to live it out. And when our intent is to align with God in every detail of our life, we'll have his blessings. We've got to be careful to do that. But if we are not, if we disregard him, if we follow the world, we're going to lack his grace to strengthen us and give us courage. Finally, this chapter also just shows us a wonderful picture of the unity among God's people at this point in their history. In the past, we've seen the people united in the rebellion against the Lord, but here we're seeing them united in their obedience to him. And you just see this beautiful unity between Joshua, the leaders, the people. They're gathering around the Lord. They're committed to being about his purposes and his plans, and they're seeking to carry out his will in this world. And they're just going to be blessed because of it. Well, that's Joshua chapter 1, a great chapter that calls us to be strong and courageous in whatever setting God has placed us. And so, wherever you are, I encourage you to meditate on God's Word, to know it and to believe it, and then seek God's grace to obey it so that the Lord will be with you wherever you go. With that, thanks for listening. I hope to catch up with you tomorrow as we turn to Joshua chapter 2 and unpack the events of the conquest. And until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until tomorrow, God bless. God bless.